This is the story of a website named Realtime Colors. It had a simple job, receive colors and show them on a real UI. Realtime Colors was happy. But then one day, it occurred to her, how should I be accessible on Firefox or on iPads? How do I even let users lock the colors they like and then randomize the rest? I don't even have a goddamn mobile version. It was time to upscale. So after this video, I took all of your suggestions and put them in a little tool called Notion. I tried to prioritize them, estimate how long they will take, and pack them up in smaller big releases. And here's a list of all that was released in the past two months. So let's see what we have. Version 1. This was the original real-time colors. You had your color selection, randomization, simple exporting and sharing, and that was about it. Version 1.1. The first thing I did was add a lock feature. This one would allow you to lock any color you like and get suggestions for the rest. You guys requested for this one a lot, so cheers. Then we had a font uploader that allowed you to upload a font file to test your favorite fonts on a real UI. Another highly requested feature was the contrast checker. This one was a bit tricky because I wanted it to be real time. One suggestion was to add a panel and while that is good, I was thinking of how to make it occupy very little space but provide instant information. Then one day, I thought of the Yoast SEO plugin lights on WordPress, which indicate how search engine optimized your content is. So I made that, but more compact, with the lights just showing green, yellow, and red. Basically, you want to make sure the texts are readable and, well, I can read it, is not good enough. The Web Content Accessibility Guidelines state that the minimum or AA level contrast ratio should be at least 3 to 1 for large texts like headings and 4.5 to 1 for small text like paragraphs. The perfect level of contrast or AAA would be at least 4.5 for large text and 7 for small text. For graphical objects like icons, lines and shapes, 3 to 1 or for thinner objects, 4.5 to 1 is great too. Based on all of this, you have a red light, yellow light and a green light. Green passes all of the levels, yellow passes only AA or large texts in AAA and red fails all of them. Now you can hover over each light and see the contrast ratio. Next up, I added the undo and redo buttons, which kind of seemed like a necessity from the beginning, you want to go back and forth easily and you want to do it on your keyboard, right? First, I used Control Z, but someone suggested to make it arrow left and arrow right, so now you have both. At this stage, the website got just a bit more responsive too. Version 1.2 A while later, I started adding documentations. I thought it's useful both for you guys and myself if there was only one source of truth about the website. Plus, in this section, you get a whole different template to try the colors and fonts on. At this stage, the problem was that you guys could not easily access the color picker on non-WebKit browsers. I admit, I just used input type color in HTML from the beginning. And it was frustrating using it, for example, on Firefox. It didn't even allow you to copy or paste any color value in there. You know what, you want my advice? Don't use input type color if the livelihood of your project depends on it, like seriously. Well, I didn't anticipate that from the beginning. I didn't even think anybody was going to use this. So my most immediate and temporary solution was to add a little text input to allow pasting and copying hex values. Did I know that custom no hassle color pickers exist? Ah, uh, yes I did, but spoiler alert, I decided to make my own. Why? We'll talk about it in just a minute. The last feature I released in this version was an export section that allowed you to download a zip file with any name you typed in, copy CSS, Tailwind CSS, SCSS, and CSV values. You could paste them in your code as variables and use them wherever you wanted. Version 2. This one was a massive release. First of all, it was time to have a custom color picker that's supported on every browser, device, and Pip-Boy of your choice. There's plenty of them like Spectrum, Colorist, IROJS, and many more. But I wanted something that matched real-time colors better and allowed me to upscale it in the future. So I just decided to to make one, just like that. For now, it allows you to see the hex value plus simple copy and paste. But I do have some plans for it. I mean, <laughs> who knows? Next up, I added the ability to type in the name of whatever font you have installed on your device or any font that is on Google Fonts and preview it on the site. No links, just names in any letter case. For the export feature, you guys asked for RGB and HSL values for exporting, and it's available now. Plus, you have two new tabs, Shades and QR Code Generator. The Shades tab is kind of something I wanted myself. I wanted to have all of these features and be able to see the shades of my selected colors again in real time. The QR code is great if you want to see your colors on different devices quickly, which is again updated in real time. We have two bonus features in this release too. The first one is the light and dark mode. This allows you to randomize in either dark 
dark or light mode or modify your colors automatically for the dark or light mode. And I will talk about this in a future video. The next feature is something that allows you to customize your randomization based on the color scheme. So you want it monochromatic, complementary, square, whatever. You have it right here. So now you have all of these from the palette generator right on the main page. In the end, I thought of two new cool sections for the landing page, a bento grid and a testimonial section. Yeah, big reveal. Now you have a whole new version of this tool in front of you. And no, don't just randomize, 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 but let the colors reflect your logo, your product or brand identity. So make sure to check out these updates for yourself and I hope they're helpful. A big thank you to you guys for sending me all the suggestions, bug reports and feature requests or supporting the project in your own ways. The grind continues. And that's all for this video. If you liked it, make sure you do your magic down there and see you on the next one.